everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be reacting to I Found Out I'm British by Aki Dearest. Now this is a channel I am not familiar with at all. I did look into it and she seems to be Japanese, I believe, and lives in California, but I don't know what her actual ancestry was from what I could find. She seems to talk a lot about Japanese culture and anime and things like that. And I did see that her partner is the anime man who I did a reaction to last year, I think early in the year, like January, 2023. So it's been a while. I don't remember what his results were necessarily, although that's not really gonna make much of an impact on her results. Now, if she is Japanese, then I think it'd be interesting to see what DNA test she takes. Most especially, is she going to take an Asian based DNA test? Whether that be 23 Ma Fong or Weijin or one of the other ones out there, because I know there are a few more, or if she takes one of the more typical ones for the English speaking world, so Ancestry, Family Tree DNA, 23andMe, Family Tree DNA, Living DNA, those types of places. Yeah, I guess it's 23andMe, because looking at the thumbnail, I was like, wait a second, yeah, it says it in the thumbnail. I guess we'll have to see how that goes, but knowing that it's 23andMe, I don't think they have a super nuanced breakdown for their Asian results, so I think think it might break down like a like northern Japan versus southern Japan sort of thing but I wouldn't be surprised if she may get other readings of Asian or something else but she may also have other ancestry and based on the title it seems like she'll have possibly British ancestry I don't know we'll see yeah so I recently took that 23andMe test it's the one where like you spit in the cup send it back to the lab and then they come back with results about like your ancestry maybe personality traits or maybe health traits that you might have inherited also I'm really late on the trend for this one because you know this thing doesn't ship to japan what the uh, why so interesting note is that with my heritage they have a wider shipping network than a lot of the other companies and because of that there's a lot of people in their database in my heritage who are in a lot more unique places than you find with like Ancestry or 23andMe. But if you know anything about Filipino history, you know that I feel like through every war, from what I've read anyway, Philippines has always just kind of gotten the short end of the stick. Thank you, thank you. Titan has freed us. Oh, I wouldn't say free, more like under new management. <laughs> under new management. <laughs> under new management. <laughs> Under new management. So I know there's Spanish in me. Spanish, Asian, Filipino. I know my real name, which is Agnes, is Greek, but that's just because my parents are weird, even though they never call me that. So I'm finally going to be answering all my life questions. How Filipino am I? Am I just a born natural good singer? So I'm still a little confused what her ancestry is. I don't know if maybe I paused it in the wrong spot at one point. I thought she was Japanese. Is she Japanese and Filipino or just Filipino or I, I don't know, but if she's only Filipino, I think we have a higher likelihood of possibly getting Spanish in there. But one thing I have heard from a lot of people and I don't know how true it is, is that even though the Spanish were there for a long time, there was very little mixing with the local Filipinos and thus not many people who are Filipino have actual Spanish ancestry. But from a lot of the DNA tests that I've seen for people who are Filipino, which granted is not many. I feel like I have seen a lot of them have like a little bit of Spanish in there. So I wouldn't be surprised if she has any in there, but if she also is Japanese, which maybe I'm just assuming that because I saw her content was Japanese and I maybe misunderstood, but if she is Japanese and Filipino, then we'll probably see a much bigger hodgepodge of things, obviously. And possibly with Japanese, I feel like I often see a correlation with Korea and with um, China. Her ancestry composition. So I am 97.1 East Asian, Filipino and Austronesian, which is a 95.7%. Oh wow, they even have like all of the regions as well. Okay, so if you guys don't know, Philippines has at least like 2000 islands, but you have like your main regions. So for me in the Philippines, it says that the number one is Western Visayas, which is located right here. That makes a lot of sense because I heard that like both my parents historically are from that area. So uh, I believe that. Uh, One thing to consider when looking at these lists is 
what is the most populous region in the Philippines or wherever you may be looking because often the most populous regions will be higher in the list because the way these lists works is they look at all of your DNA matches and see where do they say that their ancestry is from because in 23andMe you get an option to say where is your paternal grandfather, paternal grandmother, maternal grandfather and maternal grandmother where were they born and then it takes all of that data and then it looks at your DNA matches using that data and then figures out okay where's the place that the most relatives have listed so when you look at your list if there's a very populous area within the philippines so if western visayas is very very populated and like where the most big the biggest cities in the philippines are located it may be something to consider when looking at this so like a great example is for people from the uk whether they're Irish or Scottish or English or Welsh or whatever, when they look at their regional breakdown, often London is going to be one of the number one spots because it's just the most populous city in the in in the UK. So that's one thing to consider. But if she does know that's where her parents are from, that certainly makes a lot of sense. But this list can be genealogically useful if you're kind of trying to figure out, well, where in this area am I possibly from? Well, looking at where a large amount of your DNA matches are from can help in determining that. Locos, I know that area. I can't tell you anything about it. I kind of thought Manila would be a little bit higher because my dad and his mom and pretty much like a lot of people are from Manila. But no, that's like number four on the list. Central Visayas, I don't know what any of these are, so I, I don't even know where this is. Okay, the second one, Chinese. 0.7% Chinese. Oh, you know what? My mom did tell me that like there were a couple of Chinese people in our family so that probably makes sense. It's also very likely that at 0.7% we're really just dealing with misreading of Philippines and this may not actually represent true Chinese ancestry, especially considering that anything that's under 2% really, but especially 1% is very low confidence when it comes to these readings. So something like Chinese when she's Filipino, we already can see it's within the same region because there's a lot of genetic correlation between these two populations. And at 0.7%, instead of representing true Chinese ancestry, this really just represents more the commonality between the Philippines and, and Chinese people. And basically her closest Chinese ancestry maybe, hun you know, many hundreds of years, if not thousands of years back, as opposed to where these tests are really looking at largely the 300 to 500 years is kind of the range. It really has to do more with generations, but generations can be bigger or smaller for some families. So 300 to 500 years is usually the best range to think about it. And even if this 0.7% is true and coming from one closest recent ancestor, then 0.7% is gonna be the equivalent of like a fifth or sixth great grandparent if not more distant. And people who are fifth or sixth great grandparents for people who are about my age, which I believe she's about my age, you're looking at people who were born in the mid to early 1700s and largely lived their lives in the 1700s, even possibly some as far back as being born in the 1600s. So you're looking at pretty far back if this is true. So being able to prove whether it would be true or not very difficult. So specifically, I'm part of this Chinese Dai. Okay, and I'm also 2.2% European, starting off at 1.4% Southern European, which is... I'm Makes sense with the Spanish, the Iberian connection. It all fits. And at 2.2%, presuming that this is all coming from one closest ancestor for her, then that's going to be looking at about a third great-grandparent, possibly as close as a second great-grandparent, possibly a little bit more distant, like a fourth great grandparent or fifth great grandparent, but basically something where if she's able to build out her family tree and identify all of her second great grandparents and all of her third great grandparents, presumably she would find one of them who was European and more than likely Spanish, knowing the history of the Philippines. I'm guessing that'll probably be Spain. Yep, sure is. I am 1.2% Spanish and Portuguese. I kind of already expected that. That's actually not as high as I thought it was gonna be. I thought it'd be like a little bit more up, but I guess because you know, the Philippines has been just so independent from Spain for so long that it doesn't even like matter at this point. I will say though, for those of you that are really unfamiliar with like Filipino culture, it has so many similarities with Spanish. We don't even have Asian last names. 
names. Look at our fucking last names. In my family alone, De La Fuente Santos Gonzalez. We're fucking Mexican. What's really, really funny about all that to me is that I come from a Sephardic family. So my mom was born Nunes Vaz. And in my family, we have Lopez Diaz, Robles, Senior Cornell, Enriquez Pimentel. So we have a lot of names that are very similar to the Filipino names. And so it's always very funny whenever I see family trees of people who are Filipino because it feels very familiar because they have a lot of the same sort of names. They do this double surnames like we do. And so it's just funny how that Hispanic culture does leak in into these various areas. Uh, let's go here, Northern European. Point eight, I'm more Northern European than I am Chinese. Okay, what's under that? British! Well, I'll tell you what. Oh my God, I think I already know what the comments are gonna say. So does that mean I can have my acceptance letter to Hogwarts now? 0.8% super trace result basically means very low confidence that it's true. The way that we can think about all of this European that she's getting is not, okay, these are all singular parts that we can say is definitely in her ancestry. The best way to look at it is, okay, regionally, she seems to have general European, which adds up to, I think it's basically, it's like 0.8%. Um, and then the Spanish and Portuguese was one point or it was 2.2 percent or something like that i can't remember so basically we're looking at like a three to four percent or so if only we could see the full results we'd be able to tell but about three to four percent or so european dna and so we think of that as a grouping where there is a possibility okay there's possibly the southern european the spanish likely and then there's the northwestern european where maybe there is in you know when you find this european ancestor they're part spanish and then part English or something like that, really at this sort of a distance and knowing the difficulty of reading a lot of European DNA, it's more likely that a lot more is going on here than what is seems to be indicating. Like it's doubtful that she'd be able to find that European ancestor, build out their family tree and find that it, you know, perfectly correlates to Spanish and Portuguese and Greek and Balkan and then the British and all of that. Could she have British ancestry? Very possibly but it's not like super, super high confidence that it, it's there. The It's a higher confidence that this British reading is more of a misread of something else with her European, likely that's Spanish, but it might also be actually British. But that's the way we have to consider these estimations is their estimations. So we have to consider what are all of the possibilities. Okay, cool. Well, uh, yeah, I can now finally tell people I'm uh, I'm British. You know, I feel like that would- No, you can't say that you're British because you got 0.8%. It doesn't just make you British. At best, you can say, I very possibly have British ancestry according to my DNA test, but this does not all of a sudden make it so like you're, oh, I'm British now. One of the things with these DNA tests that I know a lot of people have an issue with is kind of this part of it where people kind of like start latching on to like different parts of their DNA test to be like, oh, this is defining me now or that's defining me now. And it's like, you know something that maybe they grew up with like knowing a little bit about the culture, but then they just kind of envelop themselves in it. And, you know, I'm not necessarily saying people can't do that, but some people jump to that really quickly. And especially with very little DNA or proof behind what's going on. So it's a big issue we have with the Sephardic world is that a lot of people for years and years and years have pushed this narrative of finding Sephardic ancestry using very low quality evidence and then saying with very little <coughs> evidence, oh yes, I'm Sephardic. And at best, even if they're correct, they're looking at ancestors who are hundreds of years back that are, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth great grandparents, if not further, who were the last truly Sephardic ancestor they had. It, it, it's very weird that people will take on these identities when you consider, even if this 0.8% is correct, that's going to be coming from like a fifth, sixth, seventh great grandparent, maybe even more distant. So even if it's a fifth great grandparent, well, you have 32 third great grandparents, 64 fourth great grandparents, and 128 fifth great grandparents. So that means that out of all of those 128, you're picking the one singular one to say, okay, now this is me. And so this is kind of one of the things that a lot of people will do with these DNA tests is they kind of adopt a whole new personality based on a very small reading that even if it is true, is only a small part of their ancestry. 
And so I think this is a part of the DNA testing world that a lot of people are kind of a little like, you know, weirded out by. And, you know, I do hear the question all the time. So can I say that I'm this? Can I say that I'm that? And I always like to say the best way to just put it is that you have this ancestry or you possibly have this ancestry if it's just through the DNA estimation and not an actual proven ancestry. All right, I feel like I'm rambling too much now. It would be a very American thing for me to do. Just like hold on to like the very, very diluted part of my DNA <laughs> and just tell people that I'm 0.8% Irish or 0.8% British. Americans, why do we do that? Why do some people just like say, oh, I'm like one eighth German and two fourths green. Like, I don't get it. And that's hilarious because that's, I mean, that's basically what I said just in a very different way, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So, okay, now we have a much better view of everything. So the European was 2.2% overall. So that's the way we want to think about 2.2%. And then this last bit, the Melanesian, the 0.5%. Greek? I was just joking. Greek and Balkan heritage? I am 0.2% Greek. That is kind of crazy though that I am more British and Irish than I am Chinese. That really surprises me. That means that some British or Irish people had some major riz on my family because... I like baked beans cold from the tin. I don't think we have any family stories of ever being involved with the UK whatsoever. Then again, like I said, the Philippines did get like thrown around a lot during the war. You know what I'm really surprised about? That I don't see Japanese in here. And I'm not saying that as like a weeb. I'm just saying that because I've known some stories of like Japan doing some pretty crazy things in the Philippines. What is this one at the bottom? 0.5% Melanesian? That sounds like another like islander area. Dive the lagoons of New Caledonia. Yeah, so I've just got like a lot of islander in me and honestly I am so proud of that. I love tropical islander culture. I think it's just so beautiful whether it's the Philippines, whether it's Polynesian, or I guess in this case Melanesian. All of the tropical areas just like run through my veins. Okay, so now that we confirmed how British I am, let's look at some traits. Uh, physical features. This one I'm not really so interested in. This is just like freckles finger length ratio but it has up here taste and smell and weird and wonderful so this one says asparagus odor detection likely can smell an estimated 13 percent of people with genetics like yours develop breast cancer by their 70s i don't think anyone in my family had breast cancer but that's probably something i have to keep in mind also it has here like a list of dna relatives so like people yes, that share your matches. similar dna composition as you yes. and i'm not going to show them just because of their names but Talk i will say it. that there's four 4,231 relatives. I think that is a very interesting thing to see with these DNA tests because a big question people always have is depending on what population I come from, what test may be the better one for me to test in. And while I don't know what the representation of Filipino or Asian is on 23andMe, her having 4,231 relatives I think is pretty good. I don't know exactly what it is for uh, a lot of people that are Filipino on the other DNA tests. Uh, hopefully she talks about what she sees the percentage of a lot of her DNA matches at because that can tell as well. Because even if it's 4,231 relatives, if her top matches are under 1% shared DNA, well then even though you have over 4,000, it's really not a lot of people that are helpful in the genealogy side of things. You know, they're basically you're not going to be able to get a lot out of that. And it's not a very good match list. But if we look at it and we see that she has a lot of matches who are, you know, over 1% DNA and around 1% DNA and some stuff like that, that's, that could be a pretty good match. This world. Holy shit. Oh my God. My family. Okay. So highlights from this whole 23 I guess nothing test, else. <laughs> uh, found out that I'm more susceptible to liking teas and crumpets than I am to bing chiling. And the other one is that I should also get checked for breast cancer. I don't know why this wasn't available in Japan. I literally had to go to the US to take this. No matter where you're from, it's just interesting to see what's in that mixing pot. Glad to know I am actually Filipino and that my parents are my parents. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm gonna go make myself a pot of tea and watch The Crown while listening to the Beatles and thinking about the British monarchy. See you. Okay, well that was an okay video. I think it was interesting to see the breakdown that she did get, especially considering with the Filipino ancestry. We did see that Spanish in there, which 
I know in some of the other Filipino reactions I've done, I've always talked about the possibility of the Spanish. And it always seems like there's a little bit in there, like a couple of percentages, which to me says that if there was mixing in the Philippines between the Spanish and the local Filipinos, that it must have largely been in the late 1700s and throughout the 1800s. I don't know a whole lot about the history of the Spanish in the Philippines. You know, I have a very generalized idea of the history with that. So I just looked it up to get a better idea of things. And from what I saw, the Spanish colony in the Philippines lasted from the late 16th century up until the late 1800s, basically 1898, I think was the year that I saw. So it certainly makes sense that for a lot of the people who are Filipino, that if they do have Spanish ancestry, it's only a small percentage. Now, if people do wanna actually learn a lot more about Filipino genealogy and DNA, I am very friendly with Mona from Mighty Magalong, which is a TikTok channel all about Filipino genealogy and i actually met her recently we're both curators on genie.com and we had dinner at a genie curators dinner in utah earlier this year so if that's something you do want to learn about she's someone very worthwhile checking out but otherwise for the results i think they were pretty typical very happy that she talked a little bit about the dna relatives Although I think it would have been interesting to see what are the top matches in terms of how much they're matching. Would have been nice if she just blurred out the names to show it all, but I know how difficult that can be having to go and blur out all those names and do all that. But hopefully you enjoyed this reaction. And if you did and would like to see more reactions just like this, be sure to check out this video of mine right here. Thank you to my Patreon patrons and YouTube members.